Level 0. This isn't acid rain, not yet. Most people assume rain is neutral, pure. The stuff of life falling from the sky. But even in its cleanest form, rainwater is slightly acidic. Not from pollution, not from smoke or fire, but from something far simpler, air. When carbon dioxide mixes with atmospheric moisture, it forms weak carbonic acid. The result, a natural rain pH of around 5.6. It doesn't sting, it won't burn, but given enough time, it will eat away marble, sandstone, even certain metals. Statues from ancient Greece, church facades in Boston, and weathered gravestones in Scotland all bear the slow fingerprint of level zero. This is the baseline, normal, the calm before the storm. It's what rain was before the Industrial Revolution rewrote the sky. In the early 20th century, scientists began to notice something strange. Rain falling near coal-burning cities measured pH levels lower than 4.5, 10 times more acidic than clean rain. Trees were dying, lakes were emptying of life, entire mountain ranges looked frostbitten in the middle of summer. In 1980, rain falling over New Hampshire registered pH 4.0, still invisible, still odorless, still falling softly. But that softness masks something more corrosive, because acidity doesn't stop politely. Once the balance tips, it spirals. Burning fuels like coal and oil inject sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere. Those gases mix with clouds, forming sulfuric and nitric acid. What comes down next is no longer just water, it's chemical weather. And from here, the levels only get worse. Level 1. pH 4.0 to 4.5. You wouldn't feel it at first. No screaming pain, no melting rooftops, just a cool drizzle on your skin, and the slow death of the ecosystem around you. At this level, acid rain begins to weaken forests from the inside out. Trees that have stood for centuries start yellowing at the tips. Needles redden, bark softens, roots fail. The soil itself becomes hostile, its nutrients stripped by acidity. This is how rain becomes poison. In the 1970s, biologists noticed that entire swaths of the black forest in Germany were fading like old photographs. In New York's Adirondack Mountains, over 500 lakes were so acidified by rain that fish simply stopped existing. Trout vanished. Reproduction rates fell to zero. The lakes looked fine, but they were sterile. It gets worse. Acid rain dissolves aluminum from surrounding rock and soil, flushing it into groundwater. Trees absorb it. So do fish. So do we. Aluminum is toxic to plant roots and lethal to aquatic life, even in low concentration. At this stage, acid rain doesn't melt skin or blister eyes. It kills quietly, silently. It erases entire ecosystems one rainfall at a time, with no fire, no warning, and no smell. If you had asthma, your lungs might tighten. If you're a pine tree, your roots are already dying. And even now, this level is still common in many parts of the world especially near coal-fired power plants and industrial zones with little to no emissions control. This is just the beginning. The rain is still soft, still clear. But what happens when the sky starts to corrode stone, metal, and everything humans have ever built? Level 2. pH 3.5 to 4.0. At this level, acid rain moves from forest floors to concrete jungles. The damage is no longer silent. You can see it, smell it. Scrape it off the surface of a statue with your fingernail. Rain this acidic begins to corrode infrastructure. Buildings, bridges, metal rails, limestone monuments, copper roofs. Everything humans thought would outlast them begins to dissolve in slow motion. In Athens, the Parthenon endured war, looting, and centuries of weather. But by the 1980s, the worst enemy was the air itself. Rainfall laced with sulfuric acid was dissolving the marble, stripping detail off carvings that had survived 2,000 years. In Cairo, the city's limestone tombs and ancient walls began to crumble, not from neglect, but from rain that fell just acidic enough to act like vinegar on stone. Paint fades, steel rusts, reinforced concrete loses strength. In some older cities, acid rain also pulls lead from plumbing, sending it into drinking water. Now it is not just a problem for buildings, it is a problem for bodies. You walk outside and it seems like nothing is wrong, but year by year your roof gets thinner, your windows pit, your balconies corrode. What rain doesn't touch directly, the runoff does. It is death by drizzle, slow enough to ignore, persistent enough to bankrupt a city. And yet this level is still not considered dangerous for direct human exposure. That changes soon. Because the next level is not about what rain does to statues, it is about what it starts doing to skin. Level 3, pH 3.0 to 3.5. The rain still looks clear, still falls soft, but now it hurts. At this level, acidity reaches the point where it can inflame human skin, irritate eyes, and burn the inside of your nose just by standing outside too long. You can walk in it, but you will not forget it. 
It is the atmospheric equivalent of lemon juice in a paper cut, except now your lungs are the paper. In 1998, rainfall in Beijing dropped to a pH of 3.0, making it as acidic as soda. But this was not something you chose to drink. It soaked into skin, corroded fabric, and coated every surface it touched. Umbrellas and face masks became part of daily life, even in sunshine. People walked undercover not for rain protection, but because the air itself had turned volatile. Children with asthma experienced more frequent attacks. Elderly lungs stiffened. Chronic exposure began to eat away at mucous membranes and sinuses. This was no longer just an environmental issue. It was a public health crisis delivered by the weather. And still, it was not enough to get global attention. At this stage, forests die faster. Crops begin to show leaf burn. Acid-sensitive amphibians disappear completely. The rain doesn't just reshape the world. It starts reshaping bodies. If you stood in this rain for 10 minutes, your skin might tingle. Stay out longer and your eyes water. Breathe deeply and your throat tightens. Still survivable. Still tolerable by environmental standards. But barely. Because now the rain is not a side effect. It is an active agent. And in the next level, it stops being a symptom of pollution and becomes a weapon. Level 4. pH 2.5 to 3.0. At this level, acid rain stops being a slow environmental killer and becomes a direct result of disaster. You are no longer dealing with routine pollution or seasonal smog. This is the kind of rain that forms when factories rupture, refineries explode, or entire chemical plants unleash their stored contents into the air. It is the kind of rain that only happens when something has already gone catastrophically wrong. The most infamous example appeared over Bhopal, India in 1984. After a midnight leak of methyl isocyanate and other industrial gases, the air itself turned toxic. Survivors described rainfall that irritated skin and burned eyes, water that felt wrong even before anyone understood what had happened. More than 15,000 people would die in the aftermath, but the rain falling that night carried its own signature of chemical acidity. Another case unfolded during the 1991 Gulf War, when retreating forces set fire to hundreds of Kuwaiti oil wells. The sky went black. Soot and sulfur rolled over neighboring countries. Rainfall during this period tested as highly acidic, in some cases nearing the pH of battery acid. People described droplets that left stains on cars, irritated nostrils, and made open water shimmer with oily films. Industrial fallout rain is unpredictable. It can range from mildly acidic to directly harmful depending on what burned, what leaked, or what evaporated into the clouds. The danger is not just the acidity, but also the cocktail of contaminants riding inside each drop. This level is not widespread. It strikes in bursts, in plumes, in the hours after an explosion or fire. But when it arrives, people know immediately that something unnatural has entered the sky. And nature is about to show how much worse it can get when the source is not a factory, but a volcano. Level 5. pH 2.0 to 2.5. You do not need cities or factories to create acid rain. The Earth can do it all on its own. When a major volcano erupts, it does more than pour lava. It sends millions of tons of sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere. There, it mixes with water vapor and sunlight to form sulfuric acid droplets. Those droplets fall back to Earth as acid rain, sometimes hundreds or even thousands of kilometers from the eruption site. After Iceland's Lockey eruption in 1783, acid rain and toxic fog spread across Europe. In Britain and France, crops withered in the fields. Livestock collapsed. People coughed blood from invisible acids in the mist. Some historians estimate the death toll from the resulting famine and air pollution reached 6 million. The sun dimmed, the air stung, and the rain burned. In 1991, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines launched so much sulfur into the sky that it cooled the planet by nearly half a degree Celsius. But before that happened, the local region was drenched in acid rain strong enough to kill plants, damage electronics, and rust metal within days. This level is not isolated. It is planetary. When volcanoes go big, they create rain that poisons rivers, erodes buildings, and sterilizes soil for seasons. Unlike industrial fallout, which might fade after the fire goes out, volcanic acid rain can last years, sustained by aerosols trapped in the stratosphere. You do not need to live near the crater, you just need to be downwind. And the worst part? You cannot stop it. You can only measure the pH and wait for the clouds to pass. But what if the acid rain never stops? What if it becomes the climate itself? Level 6. pH 1.5 to 2.0. This is not a storm. It is a condition. At this level, acid rain becomes a chronic feature of the environment. It does not fall after eruptions or explosions. It becomes routine. The sky is permanently sick, and everything under it begins to rot in slow motion. In La Oroya, Peru, this is not science fiction. 
For decades, the city has lived under a permanent haze of sulfur dioxide from a local smelter. Rain here has been recorded as acidic as pH 1.8. The results speak for themselves. Vegetation near the smelter has been stripped away. River water runs acidic. Children suffer from chronic respiratory illness, lead poisoning, and skin irritation. This is what happens when acid rain outpaces recovery. Forests no longer regrow. Lakes no longer buffer. Even concrete becomes porous and fragile. The protective coatings on buildings, bridges, and human lungs wear thin. Centuries ago, a similar environmental collapse may have contributed to the fall of pre-Columbian civilizations in Mesoamerica. Researchers studying lake sediments near ancient settlements found sharp spikes in acidity and heavy metal concentration, likely from volcanic activity combined with regional drought. Soil fertility plummeted. Food systems buckled. Societies that had lasted hundreds of years unraveled under invisible pressure from the sky. Level 6 is not a splash of acid. It is a drip-feed apocalypse delivered over generations. Ecosystems break, agriculture fails, cities crumble. The damage is not always visible right away, but it is constant, unforgiving, irreversible without intervention on a massive scale. And for the people living under skies like this, it is already too late. Because at level 7, the rain no longer poisons you slowly. It attacks on contact. Level 7. pH 1.0 to 1.5. At this point, acid rain stops being a background hazard. It becomes a direct threat to human tissue. Not metaphorically, literally. Rain with a pH near 1.0 is chemically similar to battery acid. Not as thick, not as hot, but acidic enough to burn exposed skin, cause chemical ulcers, and permanently damage eyes. Just a few minutes in open weather is enough to leave injuries that require medical treatment. You do not get soaked. You get burned. This level is rare in nature, but it is not unheard of. Industrial accidents have produced rainfall this acidic. In military history, World War I saw the use of chemical agents like sulfur dioxide and phosgene gas. When combined with moisture in the air, they created hyperacidic mist that burned skin and lungs. Soldiers described coughing until their throats bled. Others reported rain that caused blistering and blurred vision after only brief exposure. And this is not just a problem of the past. In heavily polluted industrial zones with poor regulation, factory fires or chemical leaks can push atmospheric acidity to these levels today. If it rains afterward, it is not weather. It is fallout. At pH 1.0, you are not standing in precipitation. You are standing in a dilute chemical weapon. The damage is immediate. No time to adapt. No time to build resistance. Metal corrodes on contact, paint bubbles, rubber weakens. And if you are caught outside with no protection, the burns on your skin are only part of the problem. What you breathe in will stay with you long after the clouds clear. And yet this is still Earth, because the next level begins at the edge of extinction. Level 8, pH 0.5 to 1.0. You are not alive for this kind of rain. If you are, you do not stay that way for long. 66 million years ago, a rock the size of a city struck the Earth, near what is now the Yucatan Peninsula. The asteroid impact vaporized massive beds of sulfur-rich rock, sending an unimaginable volume of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere. Within hours, global temperatures plummeted. Within days, the skies turned dark. And then, the rain began. According to geochemical models, that rain may have had a pH below 1.0, acidic enough to burn skin, acidic enough to kill fish in rivers across the world acidic enough to sterilize entire ecosystems before the ash even settled. In the fossil record, freshwater life vanishes almost overnight. Forests collapse. Coral reefs go silent. The acid stripped away the foundations of food chains, from plankton to apex predators. This was not a local event. It was global. Ocean chemistry changed. Weather patterns snapped. The rain did not fall as storms. It fell as a planet-wide purge. What happened after the asteroid was not just an impact winter. It was an acid bath dissolving the biosphere from the sky downward. For months, maybe years, the air itself was toxic. Any creature that breathed, drank, or absorbed moisture through its skin was at risk. And yet even this extinction-level acid rain was natural, earth-made, random. But what if it were designed? What if someone wanted it to happen again? Because the next level is not an accident. It is acid rain with a purpose. Level 9. pH less than 0.5. If you want to see what happens when acid rain never ends, look up at Venus. Its atmosphere is a nightmare of superheated carbon dioxide, pressurized to over 90 times Earth's surface level. Floating within it are massive clouds of concentrated sulfuric acid, not just acidic rain, but an entire weather system of corrosive vapor. It is not water up there. It is chemical fire hanging in suspension. The surface temperature reaches over 460 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead. 
the rain does not even reach the ground. It evaporates mid-fall, consumed by the heat, leaving only acid mist to circulate above the lava-like plains. Spacecraft sent to Venus survive for minutes before being crushed, melted, and digested. And yet, scientists believe Venus may have once had oceans, blue skies, possibly life. Then came a tipping point. Volcanoes released sulfur compounds faster than the atmosphere could absorb. The greenhouse effect took off like a runaway train. Oceans boiled, carbon escaped, sulfur rose, the clouds thickened, rain turned acidic and never stopped. It is the final form of atmospheric collapse, a world not just uninhabitable, but hostile to the very concept of biology. Here on Earth, we are not close, but we are not immune. Some climate models suggest that unchecked industrial sulfur emissions, combined with carbon-driven warming, could push the planet towards similar instability, not in decades, but perhaps in centuries. If that process begins, it will not look like fire. It will look like clouds. It will look like overcast skies and chemical rainstorms that start shallow, then stay. At that point, weather is no longer local. It is a planetary rejection of life, and there is only one level left when acid rain is not natural, not accidental, but designed. Level 10. This is no longer nature turning against us. This is someone turning the sky. In theory, it would not take much. Inject the right mix of sulfur dioxide or nitrogen-based compounds into the stratosphere using aircraft, rockets, or high-altitude balloons. Wait for it to spread across jet streams, then let it fall. What comes down next would not be rain. It would be a planetary chemical attack delivered from above. Geoengineering researchers have proposed similar ideas to cool the Earth by mimicking volcanic eruptions. But in the wrong hands, the same method becomes something else entirely. A way to collapse ecosystems, a way to starve nations, a way to destroy infrastructure, disrupt economies, and poison entire populations without firing a single missile. The rain would begin innocently enough, just a light drizzle. Maybe a haze in the air, but then the crops stop growing. The lakes turn sterile. The rivers run acidic. And the people underneath have no idea what is happening until their rooftops corrode and their lungs begin to burn. It is not science fiction. Every part of this is technically possible with current technology. It is only held back by law, by ethics, and by the thin hope that no one is willing to terraform a planet into a tomb. Some believe it could be used for war. Others whisper about sterilizing planets before colonization. In the end, the result is the same. Acid rain becomes more than a consequence of pollution or catastrophe. It becomes intentional, not a byproduct, not an accident, a message. And when that kind of rain falls, there is no shelter, no fixing the soil, no rebuilding. There is only one question left. If someone ever pulls that trigger, would we even know it was them before the sky turned against us?